I will stipulate that I find the song Guantanamera kind of annoying. Uh, the tune is just cloying and repetitious, and it just gets under my skin because once it gets in your head, you cannot get it out. That said, Jose Marti, the poet who coined the, uh, the words to what became the song, uh, is a very gifted man, and, or was a very gifted man. As a political revolutionary in Cuba in the second half of the 19th century, he was a very uh, gifted poet and a subtle leader in a revolutionary movement. He, uh, he gave himself over to the uh, romantic realist tradition in uh, fostering political dissent within a uh, rigid and unaccepting structure. He, uh, this song, Guantanamera, I Am a Honest Man, as the translation has it, uh, is a declaration of, uh, of uh, faith, of, uh, uh, of self-identity, of dignity, and of kind of resignation to uh, his own fate, which at times was rather bleak as a revolutionary. Um, he starts off, you know, I am an honest man, which is just uh, a curiously self-assertive uh, demand to make uh, of your reader, to acknowledge that I am an honest man. Uh, that's somewhat defensive, you could argue. The implication, well, is there any way to think that, the, you, you, that is there any reason I should think you are a dishonest man? Well, you get the sense that perhaps as a member of a persecuted political class, the authorities are challenging his character. And so the simple declaration, I am an honest man, has some, uh, it has some teeth to it. Uh, I am an honest man from where the palms grow. Before I die, I want my soul to shed its poetry. He has already given up. He is resigned to death. Before I die, I want my soul to shed its poetry. I have this to say. I am going to say it. Another act of defiance. Impressive. Uh, I come from everywhere to everywhere I'm bound. A sense of universalism, which is kind of an idealism. Uh, he is bound to everywhere, somewhat perhaps uh, in a spiritual sense, if he is going to die. Uh, an art among the arts, a mountain among mountains. He demands recognition for his art as an art, uh, and he's giving a kind of equivocation between uh, the art and, uh, and nature, between art and nature. But also, uh, he is himself a kind of poetry in this, because he, he starts off, you know, I come from everywhere to everywhere I'm bound. So he's not speaking about his poetry there so much as he's speaking about himself. So he sees himself and his life as a kind of poetry, which is a grand romantic uh, gesture, if you will. Um, I know the unfamiliar names of grasses and of flowers, of fatal deceptions and exalted sorrows. Uh, he's done his homework. He has, uh, ex he has studied all of the symbols of nature and can readily use them in his poetry. Uh, he is demanding recognition. Look at, uh, look at how this comes out. You know, I know this. I've seen that. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen. Saying, okay, you know, I am a poet. I am legitimate. You have to recognize me. Uh, on darkest nights I've seen rays of the purest splendor raining upon my head from heavenly beauty, which is a gorgeous phrase. I've seen wings sprout from handsome women's shoulders, which is a curious uh, implication of uh, divinity on earth. Perhaps a little sense of what will sprout to become magical realism here. The melding of... Um, uh, of divine elements within a very realistic, common, earthly format or forum, uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, kind of like Marty, then he's, you know, you can see how this could be a through line. Uh, seen butterflies fly out of rubbish heaps. Again, oh, Marquez is gonna, Garcia Marquez is gonna love butterflies. 
but the, the melding of beauty and the common, uh, the romantic ideal with the earthly realism. Uh, I've seen a man who lives with a dagger at his side, never uttering the name of his murderess. Oh, that's got some, uh, some edge. Twice, quick as a wink, I've seen the soul, once when a poor old man succumbed, once when she said goodbye. Uh, he's seen men die. He's seen the soul exit the body. And he was struck by that and moved by that and can now use that in his poetry. Again, he's laying out uh, his curriculum vitae here. He's saying, okay, I have done this, I have seen this, I have seen this, I have, you know, I have experienced this and I can say it all in poetry because I am saying it all right now in poetry. Uh, once I shook with anger at the vineyard's iron gate when a savage bee attacked my daughter's forehead. He is capable of great passionate love uh, and he can see a threat in nature. Once I rejoiced as I had never done before when the warden weeping read my sentence of death. Uh, passions in another direction and he can see how political threats can be just as horrifying. Uh, his daughter gets stung by a bee and he feels quite passionate about that, but then he matches that with a kind of uh, equivalent passion, which is when he was condemned to die in a court of law. Uh, the scale of that, the matching of the nature and the political, is quite uh, impressive. The, the, uh, the passion the passionate love he feels for his daughter matches the outrage he would feel or the gratitude he says that he feels when he is going to be sentenced to death. It's uh, There's so much going on in that one. If I am to take a jeweler's finest gem, I take an honest friend, put love aside. I've seen a wounded eagle fly to the tranquil blue and seen a snake die in its hole of venom, which kind of that snake die in its hole of venom that to me has a, the feeling of political symbols going on there that perhaps he did not feel free to name names but if you're dealing in allegory well you can say lots of different things and allegory is a poet's tool that he has in his quiver and is not shy about expressing well do I know that when the livid world yields to repose, the gentle brook would ripple on in deepest silence. So amid all this war and peace, the sturm and drang, the drama and the, oh, all the worldly cares, nature goes on, life goes on. He has a great sense of perspective here, and he can take solace in the kind of eternity he finds in nature. I've laid a daring hand, rigid from joy and horror, upon the burnt-out star that fell before my door. My manly heart conceals the pain it suffers. He's saying this to somebody who's condemned to die. Sons of a land enslaved live for it silently and die. And yet he is speaking through his poetry. He's differentiating himself a little bit here. And yet he's saying that, okay, by living silently and me saying they are living silently through my poetry, it's got kind of a double-edged sword there. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure exactly where he's falling on that, but it's an interesting concept. All is permanence and beauty, and all is melody and reason, and all like diamonds rather than light is coal. Hmm. I know that fools are buried splendidly, with floods of tears and that no fruit on earth is like the graveyards. Which again feels like uh, the fools who are buried splendidly sound like political leaders to me. I understand, keep still, cast off the versifier's pomp, which is a little infective at other poets who are perhaps not so committed to their causes, and hang my doctoral robes upon a withered tree. He's willing to sacrifice, he's willing to die for his art. He's willing to accept the punishment, the effects. But he demands recognition. Recognition of his commitment, of his faith, recognition of his talent, his capacity, recognition of his art and his humanity. And once you do that, you take away the authority's capacity to demonize you. 
once you do that, you have to admit that the government is crushing an honest man. No matter what they say, the government is killing an honest man. And here I don't mind so much the song with its repetition because it is drilling that point home. He's an honest man and he's condemned to die. And it's the government's fault.